David Higgins is about to join us then. Welcome back to the show, mate. How are you? Oh, hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm bloody good, mate. Well, look, this story, I'm just trying to get my head around it, and I'm so glad that you've joined us. Okay. So the stakes for, for Joseph uh, fighting Joe Joyce next month are raised. I'm just reading off the news at the moment, okay? WBO's ruled that an interim heavyweight title is going to be on the line. Now, Usyk holds that belt at the moment. So what do you exactly mean, or what do they do mean, David, by an interim heavyweight title? Yeah, good. It's a very good question. So obviously there are the world titles proper, and in boxing there's four sort of credible sanctioning bodies um, at, at this point in time, the WBA heavyweight world title belt is held by Tyson Fury, and the other three title belts, the IBF, WBO, WBC, are uh, held by um, by Alexander Usyk. Um, now, uh, so what's happened here is obviously that, um, Joseph Parker versus Joe Joyce is WBO number one contender Joyce versus number one two number two contender Joseph Parker. And the promotion of the event, Frank Warren's obviously petitioned the WBA saying, Hey, will you give this fight special status, um, namely interim heavyweight title status? And they do that from time to time. You do see it in other divisions and occasionally where there's an interim title holder and the obvious question is what the hell does that mean yeah. when Usyk is the proper world title holder and I, I, the only way I can describe it is it's like being Deputy Prime Minister where if the Prime Minister got hit by a bus, the Deputy Prime Minister becomes Prime Minister. In this case if Parker won against Joyce and became the WBO um, interim heavyweight world champion and then Fury beats Usyk, which he probably will, and retires, then suddenly Parker's the, the WBO heavyweight world champion on the retirement of Fury. Or, in, in another case, let's say Usyk won that fight, Parker's next in line. So it's, it's almost like a status thing where they're giving the Parker-Joyce fight special status. They're saying, hey, we're in an age where people, boxers avoid each other, it's rare to see the best fight the best. You know, our WBO title mandatory hasn't happened for three years or whatever we're fed up with this we're going to give this fight parker joyce special status okay. and, and and it's kind of a kudos thing as well as being next in line and also if someone retired or died or whatever then that interim title holder would become world champion so okay. it does have some meaning yeah. but it is a bit confusing yeah, it's a hell of a confusion. Also, when we spoke to Joseph last week, and thanks for uh, organising that for us, mate, um, that um, he said that the, there's whatever happens, there's a, a rematch clause in his fight with Joe Joyce anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And, um, um, you know, we, we didn't want that, but that's they wouldn't have taken the fight. And that's kind of a mark of respect to Joseph. That they, It's funny because before the, the Chisora fight where Joseph outclassed Chisora the second time, before that, they were willing to do the fight with no rematch clause, but they wow. saw how good Parker looked against Chisora, and suddenly they they said, no, we won't take it without that. Which, you know, it's a weak way to go into a fight for them. Like, look what happened, you know, Joshua demanded that rematch clause with Usyk. He got his rematch, he got beaten again, and Usyk had it all on the line. So and, uh, this is similar, you know, Joseph's got it all on the line, must win, backs himself... Um, their team, it's a little bit softer. They're saying, oh, we're a bit scared. We might lose, so we want a rematch. Now, that's not a bad thing. Parker beat Chisora twice in a row. Um, we've tightened the schedule, so if there is a rematch, it's in December, only a couple of months later. So it's bang, bang, wow. Joyce twice, and the money's good. The money goes up, and it's on Brit and the rematch will be on British Sky Sports. So, the, 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 you know, the, the rematch is would be lucrative, it will be on Sky, the biggest, the best pay per view platform in the world, and you know, um, and a good payday in that. So it's not a bad thing. It's it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Like you know, you'd you'd rather have the choice not to. But then again, you 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 know, this is a risk business, and you, you you're not going to become world champion or undisputed world champion if you can't beat Joe Joyce. David, so David Higgins is with us. You know, I grew up and there was um, there were three. I think it was the WBC, IBF, um, WBO. What's the other one? There's... Um, WBA. Yeah, WBA. WBA. So the, I think it was the WBA, WBC, IBF with those. So the WBO's in there as well. Is there a ranking list of these belts, which any is more important, or does that change just depending on who you're talking to? 
Um, it'll change. They'll, they'll all tell you they're the most important. The WBC actually is the one Tyson Fury has. They call that the green belt or the linear heavyweight world title. So back in the day, there was only one, and that's the way it should be. And, you know, Muhammad Ali had the linear title, the green belt. That's WBC. That's the one Tyson Fury has. Yep. But the WBO and IBF now have similar credibility. In my personal opinion, the WBA, and this is just based on personal experience, I, I think they're a bit of a bit Mickey Mouse. Like, they've got a permanent two world champion situations you've got the the super champion they call it and then the regular champion so the wba sort of permanently have two wow. world champions which cool. is a bit silly yeah and then also you know we've we've had situations where we've sanctioned with the wba with say jeff horn and parker and they've won their fights won consistently the fights but gone down the rankings and then you'll see some guy who's never fought in two years suddenly pops into the top 10 and so it's all but my you know, my experience has been that the wba are less than scrupulous so i have to be careful what i say yeah, sure, but yeah. look if if you google if you google ibf and you know fraud or whatever and wbc <laughs> and fraud and, da -da -da, <laughs> right. and do that exercise and see how many entries come up for each one, and you might find that one of them has ten times more entries well, than the other three. You could also, you, I tell but, you what, you could do. You could Google boxing fraud, mate, and there'd be a billion entries come up, wouldn't there? So yeah, no, there would. But what I'm saying is, you might find that there's more entries associated with a certain body right. than others. Okay. Uh, uh, reading, so read between the lines. Good Lord. So what, I mean, it's just like you're playing with a deck that's marked the whole thing. So, okay, let's just establish on your own mind. I love all this stuff, by the way. So, the, you know, is it, is if to a normal boxing fan like myself who's looking at that heavyweight division and loving it at the moment because you've got glamour and you've got big personalities, you've got big heavyweight punches and that, is it, is it Usyk 1 followed by Tyson Fury 2 or to be Tyson Fury 1 followed by Usyk 2 even though Usyk's got all the belts? What's your thoughts? Oh, Fury's number one, um, and and you know, he's he's it's superhuman what he's done to come back from that. He's the one that ended Klitschko's boring win as world champion. He's the one that beat Wilder not once but three times and came back from the dead to beat him the second time. Yeah. Um, he is unbeaten. He's got amazing footwork for a guy that's six foot nine. He's got the greatest self belief of any sports star I've come across. Um, very skilled. He's got the personality outside the ring, overcome the mental health battles. He's got the gift of the gab. He, you know, the, the, the traveling people are treated like a minority and badly treated. And the UK, when, when he beat Klitschko, he got no plaudits. He was mocked by the British media. They now, they now love him. But, you know, he's overcome a, a lot. And so if he beats Usyk to become the first undisputed world champion since Lennox Lewis, the first in 20 years... He could retire up there with Muhammad Ali as one of the greatest of all time. Um, and, you know, it'll, it, that might sound a bit of a big statement now, but that's how it will be looked back upon when they look at his career, if that, if that transpires, which I think it well could. I'd say Usyk's number two for me, very skilled. He was um, pound for pound one of the best in the world, and he unified the cruiserweight division. And for him... A much smaller guy, totally outclassed Joshua, the much bigger guy, speaks to the sheer, just the skill level yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, technically brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then, then following that, you've got Wilder, massive puncher, but defense is full of holes. And then it's the Wild West after that, like Joyce and Parker right in there. And look, look, all this other bullshit aside, Parker Joyce is a proper 50 50 fight, the best fighting the best. And it really is, regardless of the extra kudos it has from this interim title thing. It, you've got a proper fight between two of the best interesting styles, and the winner will most likely or almost certainly fight for the world title next year. So it's very interesting for Kiwi sports fans. And the other thing, it's the biggest occasion in New Zealand professional boxing since Parker won his world title, I think, against um, Ruiz. Um, it's a big opportunity for Joseph to fight for this interim title and then go on, hopefully get a title shot next year. September the 25th it is. You'll be over there, I'm sure. Yep, yep, I'll be there. All right. How's fatherhood, dude? Oh, it's good, actually. It's a very different pace of life. Um, you know, 
doing school um, preschool trips and um, it sl- helps slow me down a bit. I've got ADHD. So, you, know. <laughs> you don't have to apologise for that, bro. Not at all. Uh, uh, yeah, no. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. So it's um, And I'm enjoying working. We've got a really good pipeline of events coming up in different countries. We've got a um, co-promoter of an event in Australia, um, the Cambosis Haney rematch at Rod Laver Arena in uh, oct- mid-October. We... Obviously, Parker fighting the UK. We we today our symphony music event is going to be the, the marquee entertainment at the Tour de France Criterium Brilliant. in Singapore, Brilliant. a cycle race in Singapore in yeah. October. Great. So, plenty busy. on, plenty on. Hey, yeah. look, great talking to you as always, mate. Thank you so much for clearing that up, cool. even cool. if it's going to bamboozle most people. Appreciate that enormously, yeah. mate. See you, David. Well, thanks, Martin. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye, David Higgins, with us. Sorry, if you get that, people. That's the WBO interim heavyweight. Title, belt. Just beat him, Joseph. I think that's all you can say. Just win, Joseph.